I'm excited to be here with Dylan Newcomb today, and we're going to be talking about embodiment. I know a lot of you who are watching or listening have at least heard of embodiment, if not your, 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 you practice uh, some aspect of embodiment. Um, and Dylan has created a new, uh, well, not new anymore, it's been, it's been two decades. But anyway, we're going to get into all this. I'm excited. Dylan, welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. So let me just kind of share your official bio with everybody. Sure, and, sure. And then, we'll, we'll, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into the conversation. So Dylan Newcomb is the founder and lead trainer of Uzazu Embodied Intelligence. That's spelled U-Z-A-Z-U. And I'm going to have you explain that, Dylan, later. <laughs> so Uzazu Embodied Intelligence. It's, it, um, Dylan is also an embodiment-based coach for helping professionals and cultural creatives and uh, is a researcher of, the, of, of all this stuff too. So Dylan has a background. Uh, he was trained in the Juilliard School. Juilliard School, you know, famous for music and performance. And, and he was trained there in dance, performance, and music composition. Uh, he danced in the Netherlands Dance Theater for eight years, was a multi-award-winning choreographer and composer uh, in that country for over a decade. And for about the last two decades, he has been developing and leading this thing called Uzazu Embodied Intelligence, which is a personal growth modality that empowers people to identify and shift their internal state from deregulation and stress to balance and empowerment. So Dylan, I'm going to stop there with the official yeah. bio because I think yeah. we're going to get into um, a lot of the stuff. So the first question uh, I want to ask you um, to kind of place Uzazu in a greater context is, you know, the word embodiment, you know, to be honest, I, I mean, I've heard about it for, for many years, but it, it really hasn't come into my, the forefront of my awareness in, uh, until the last couple of years. And I'm, uh, you know, since you have been working in this field for so long now, I wonder, could you give us that, that bigger context of, you know, there used to be mind body you know, now it's embodiment. Uh, how do those relate? Kind of give us your take on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, when I was growing up, uh, I'm 50 now, so I guess I was growing up in the 80s-ish. Uh, mind body was more the term. And uh, so yoga was a mind body practice, uh, tai chi, qigong, these types of things. Um, and and the sense was with that, that I gathered from it was, it was mind body because it was conscious movement, right? We were, we weren't just doing it for the physical gains or the physical skill. We were doing it to shift our energy, to shift our mood, which would clarify our thinking it was sort of like active meditation was another term, right? Walking meditation, moving meditation. Um, and I just so interrupt you for a sec. Sorry about that, but it's so interesting because when I thought of mind body, I simply thought that they were trying to make the connection that there is a there is a connection between the mind and the yeah, body. Absolutely, but you're actually taking it to the level of practice now, and which is which is great. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. Mind body was also just trying to trying to put on 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 the people's cognitive map like it's a it's a both way connection yes right the mind affects the body the body affects the mind because that was not a given 30 years ago for yeah years it's ago. shocking right <laughs> but no i mean to us it's so normal today but <laughs> that but was yes. like a kind of out there alternative concept that's right and then of course yeah. naturally well if there's a connection how do we live uh, how then do shall we live it's like well then yes. we can we can practice something there are different modalities but yeah go ahead yeah so uh maybe i'll jump ahead to embodiment define that for a sure. moment and then circle back and fill in yeah yeah that's great um different people it's a very broad term and it's and it's a, a newly you know trending term it's 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 trending massively in the last few years uh particularly the last three years um which is great you know when i used to go around 15 years ago saying i do embodiment i got much more puzzled <laughs> looks than i do now which is great um as i hold it embodiment there is the sense of return to the to the body right this m body like well what what is being embodied and who is embodying it <laughs> right like so embodiment 
as we use it in culture, tends to have two different facets to it. One is more internal, one is more external. The internal is like, oh, I now have more and more conscious awareness of my feelings, of my energy, of where I can feel stuff, of where I'm numb. So I'm aware of where I'm not aware. Uh, I'm aware of how I'm reacting in the moment. And increasingly, as you get into that, I'm aware of how all of that is influencing my thoughts, my feelings, my actions. And then the next level of skill after that is I can start to I can start to exercise some conscious will in that. I can go, oh, I am, I'm noticing that upset. I'm noticing that anxiety. And with a breath and a relaxation downwards, I can, you know, cut that in half in just two or three breaths and carry on in a more calm way in my conversation with George in this podcast. Or I notice that edge of nervousness and I can take that moment to shift my state, right? Or I'm noticing I'm yeah. a little bit back here. Oh, I can I shift think. into more comfort. That's the internal gain of embodiment. I love this. And if anyone happens to be listening instead of watching, I do recommend that you actually watch this video because Dylan lives this stuff. And you can tell by the way that he is presenting to us <laughs> that he is, you know, this is very um uh, yeah, it's 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 in, there's, it's integrated. It's it's integrated right. in your way of expression. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, colloquially, we also all are familiar with. Oh, he really embodies virtue, or he embodies the the Icelandic aesthetic, or you know, or Bjork's work embodies the the Icelandic spirit. Right. So it sort of is a living, manifested example of in the world, right? People even say, oh, this car embodies the, you know, this Jeep embodies the rugged American spirit or whatever, meaning it's a manifestation of it. You see it, it's tangible. So the other part of it is, and this flows from, from the internal yin to the external yang of it, is that, and this is for me, the, the full promise of embodiment and why it's becoming so popular. Uh, is that when we can shift that state into the place that really not only helps us feel more regulated and connected and empowered, but is, a, is the kind of state that is a good fit for the moment, for, what's, for how we're needing to show up to connect, to actually publish that blog article, to uh, stand in our truth, to whatever it is, right? There are states that serve that whatever type of behavior and states that might in and of themselves, like if you were in a meditation session or something, be a great state, but it's not the state, it's not the energetic vibe, right? That you need for that moment. Uh -huh. um, and so if you can shift your internal state into the state that will serve you in that moment, you can not only have, you know, skillful internal embodiment, but you can embody something in the world. You can yeah. be that that doer <laughs> that totally. not just that beer but also yeah. that it's it's so interesting I, I feel like I've kind of intuitively sensed into that over the years I talk about this thing I call joyful productivity which is essentially yeah, yeah. embodied embodied values in our day-to-day -day moments of work and that's kind of what you do and I, I you and I do focus made sessions together sometimes and <laughs> I see you do some movement to be able to kind of bring this bring the the moment you know bring bring your um, intention into the moment etc yeah. so embodiment you've done a fantastic job of explaining that what what, what that means now let's go into Uzazu if, if, it, okay. if it feels right now so you've developed this this technique you're a researcher of embodiment you've developed this technique called Uzazu u-z-a-z-u -Z -Z so a couple things one is why is it called that and, <laughs> and what is it yeah yeah um i think the the more slightly more deluxe explanation of usazu is good to circle back on how did i transition uh from being a dancer choreographer to what i do now because mm -hmm. the, the answer to that question is in there yes uh the other piece in the ecology of this, I, I grew up with singing and dancing. My mother's a dancer. I actually grew up with West African dance. That's my mom's, was my mom's obsession all when I was growing up. Uh, so my pathway into dance was through, through um, American contra dancing and folk dancing and West African dancing. 
From there, I got into modern and then ballet and then went to Juilliard and got into a ballet company. So it was a very, and then got into Butoh and contact improv. And uh, so like I've, I've run the gamut in terms of movement, which has been wonderful. Um, but another thread for me was meditation. Um, since I was 12, I, and my parents weren't into it necessarily. I just, I just identified Japanese culture and Zen particularly when I was 12, became obsessed with it and started meditating. Um, and, but then when I was 18, I got into, uh, Vipassana Buddhism insight meditation and went really deep into that for about eight years. Um, to the point where when I was about 26, 27, 28, I was really torn between do I go to a monastery or do I live this, you know, non-monk life and, and, and risk, you know, getting caught up in illusion and samsara and craving and aversion. Can I make it through and still, you know, get enlightened or be here or, you know, reach whatever in the, the, the in answer the is authentic. Order? marketing no. <laughs> oh is it <laughs> no, but no it's it's brilliant and I, I love that your history includes both well and uh, you know the, the 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 dance and choreography and performance is almost like the development of consciousness through active expression yes and that like the the meditation and the zen and the vipassana is like development of consciousness through stillness <laughs> you know it's like yeah, you got, yeah you exactly got that, yeah that um one felt very in the body, very visceral, whether it was yes. the, the, the sensual aesthetics of, of sound and movement. Yes. Um, and also I, you know, I got to do that in a dance studio with other people and on stage. And so, but my life wasn't like that necessarily. Like my relationship to finances wasn't a joyous, sensual dance. My relationship with my significant other was not, well, a string of breakups wasn't <laughs> like that. Um, so I was like, how can I, how can I integrate this more? You know, I've learned so much through meditation in these states, but they're not integrating into the moments where I most want them. Or if they are, they're, they're in it, but in a way that is removing me from it. Like my sex life was messed up because I just felt like kind of in and out of it. Like I wasn't able to integrate that non-attachment with enjoying sex. Hmm. Um, so I, I decided, well, I feel like underneath sound and movement is energy, is just like conscious energy integrating into the flow of life. And how can I research that and understand, like take what I'm learning and weave it together in a way that I can explore how things wanna feel and move in these other contexts. So I got a grant from the Dutch government to research the effect of vowel sounds on thought, emotion, and behavior which is where I thought that's where uh, like it, it's, it's concrete, it's, it's researchable, and it's where sound and movement and, and awareness come together. So I had hundreds of people for three years come into the studio, and it was a large grant, and uh, make vowel sounds and chant them and then just close their eyes and intuitively move. And we documented 40 different vowel sounds with multiple uh, cultures and genders and patterns, very clear patterns started to emerge of how the body moved, depending on how the mouth was and what feeling states. And very importantly, and this was sort of the, the unexpected gift, where people were loving certain vowel sounds and feelings and where people were very uncomfortable with them. So some people like really like you give them an ah and say, go play for 10 minutes with ah, and they're like, ah, they're like a pig and shit. Ah, ah, ah. Other people are like become really self-conscious, right? Ah, ah, that's a little too out there. Ah. Right. Other people, you give them an ooh, and they're like, ooh, 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 this is intimate and sensual and grounded. Ooh, gets me into it. Somebody else is like, ooh, this feels stuck. Ooh, ooh, this feels limited. This feels like, ooh. Right. So that's, it started to become this language where somebody would even walk into the studio. You look at their body language, you go, and be able to make a pretty good prediction of what types of movements and qualities and sounds would be would be a fit for their natural tendency. So fast forward 20, that was 20 years ago. Fast forward 20 years ago, this has evolved into a very sophisticated modality of understanding different states. What are these states good for, so to speak, from a sort of practical point of view? 
and what vowel sounds, breaths, and body postures and imagery help people activate these states. And then another layer of how to work through any resistance or trauma or limiting beliefs that might be presenting them, preventing them from activating and utilizing these states in a, in a constructive way where their system isn't going, it's not safe for me to feel this. It's not safe yeah. for me to be this way in the world. I love it. I, you know, it's so powerful because it, you're integrating so much of the human experience, uh, you know, not, not, not just movement, not just thought, both the movement, thought, and expression, mm. uh, both, you know, vocal and bodily expression right. uh, into, into something that's practical and that you can actually use on a day-to-day basis. Uh, which I see you use when we when we do focus made session. You're just you're you're working, but you're also embodying that uh, yeah. so that you can you can bring a more um, powerful, uh, more purposeful state. So that's that's amazing. So, um, my gosh, the time is already flying by so fast. But I want to I want to. How many uh, minutes do we have left, roughly? Well, we have we have a, yeah we have like seven or eight minutes left. But, okay. Um, so I definitely want people to know how to, how to learn more about this. Obviously, we're going to have all the links below, but mm, mm. I would say, let me, let me ask you this one question. Um, what have you noticed? What kinds of changes have you noticed within students or practitioners of Uzazu? And mm. I know you've done this for so many years with so many people that it's hard to pick out. But if there are any general patterns you've noticed, what tends to happen to somebody as they practice this? Yeah. And they practice it correctly. They track, practice it well. <laughs> yeah, sure. The first word that comes to me is less reactivity. It's like, imagine, I like to think of it as, as, a, as a full color palette. Uh, Uzazu is a model. There's different ways you could slice and dice it, but it, it's a very full spectrum color palette of the different states that we go through neurologically and relationally. By systematically, routinely going through them all. It's, it's like, imagine if your spine, you can bend this way and this way, but a lot of people, they get really stiff this way because they don't use it that much. It's like recovering those degrees of freedom so that when life is asking you to move this way, your system goes, sure, right? Not like, oh, I can't move that way. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, externalizing the metaphor here to make it uh, yeah it's like if you if you, the, the more powerfully flexible you are the more you can flow with the callings of life right. instead of break <laughs> because it's yeah right so like the shift from assertiveness to empathy and back again that's a really that's a good one that can be really hard right like oh i need to be assertive but now i need to just drop that and and empathize with the other person's point of view Right. And if the system is freaked out to do that, no, it's not safe to give up my own point of view because I blah, blah, blah. Right. Then that's stress. That's a form of stress and strain on yourself, on the relationship. So that non that greatly reduced reactivity, much more sense of flow. Right. Because as you can imagine, then it's like, oh, OK, like what is the moment asking of me? Great. Let's do it. And then being able to enjoy that more. Right? Because your body isn't going, no, no, mm-hmm. but your body mind. Yeah. So, and then the next thing I would say is energy, just much more energy because all of that resistance right. costs energy. Right. Yes. Right. You're, and so you're, when, when you're not only not losing energy to resistance and, and, and sort of friction, but you're actually starting to gain energy, like, yeah. oh, I like that. Oh, I like that too. Yeah. Oh, I, lo- I love it. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Well, the last few minutes, I want to just how, what is, what are the next steps for somebody who's interested to learn more? Um, yeah, sure, I probably sure. want to describe it. Um, let me, let me just frame that first by saying we've evolved Uzazu really over the last 10 years. I've focused on a sort of a bifurcation of our customer segments, which is personal and professional. Okay. So I, I'm sort in some months and some years, I'll focus more on, on serving the personal use side of Uzazu because it's really important to me that this is, you know, it has such such power. I really want to give that as a gift to the world that people can just use this. So we have like a one day 
online training that you, you know that you can get that just teaches you all the basics of it. We have a personal assessment that's for free, the embodied intelligence self-assessment, which you just answer these questions about your life and it it sort of deduces therefore which types of balanced and imbalanced states you frequent more and helps you understand the ecology of those states, which is really helped. That's sort of the starting point in Usaz is like what states are going on right now and then you know which ones do you want to target? to work on. Uh, so it can be both a general practice and very much a specific practice because everybody's different in their pattern, right? Um, so that's personal use. Um, and like I, I do a group coaching program now if somebody wants to go on a longer personal growth journey with that. And then there's the professional side, which is for coaches and therapists and other helping professionals. So we have like a three-day training for them. We have a nine-month certification training. Um, and we attract pretty much a balance of psychotherapists or therapists and coaches, which I, I really like. I teach together with a psychotherapist who's trained in somatic psychotherapy and uh, trauma therapy. And, and so we, we somatic is another word, somatic, right? This is another based. word that's yes. been, it become, it's been trending over the last probably decade or more, yeah. uh, which is related, which is, you know, yeah, similar. Thank you so much, Dylan, for this amazing work. Um, I, I see so much potential in it and grateful that you, you brought this out into the world based on research uh, and, of course, decades of practice and with so many students and, and pro professionals doing this. So um, those of you who are interested, uh, the links are below. You know, we'll, 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 we'll link to the assessment. We'll link to sort of the personal training as well as the professional. And um, maybe there's, is there any kind of, send us off with with some some encouragement or some insight or anything you want to you want to share here as we Oof, uh, just to take those moments to pause when you're like sitting down at your computer about to engage in a in a, in a new or a next task or about to go off to an appointment and just inquire into, okay, that, that situation or endeavor, okay, there's that, there's my state here. How aligned do they feel, right? Not just in isolation, how do I feel right now, but how do I feel relative to the task at hand? And is there anything, and then Uzazu of course equips you with how to, but already just intuitively asking that question. And, and then is there anything, that wants to happen right now that I can do just with, with breath or a shift or some movement that would help me feel more ready and aligned to go into this. Just taking that moment can make all the difference. Excellent, excellent. Well, Dylan, thank you so much for your work. And uh, I hope folks who are watching or listening will check out the links below and follow up with this uh, powerful method. Well, thank Thanks, you, George, for, for this interview. And I wanna take a moment to thank you for your there's something about your your quality of of gentle strength and compassion that for someone being in the marketing world is is uh, just such a a reassuring anchor to know that that those qualities can be held in this space uh, it's a it's a gift to people like me who mm -hmm. are often asking ourselves, can we market effectively with integrity <laughs> yeah. and compassion? <laughs> well, it is certainly a mutual admiration society here. So <laughs> thank you, Dylan. And um, yeah, thank you for your work. See ya.